more and more, I am just convinced that uh, there's no accidents. Uh, and, uh, and, and again, I, I know this, but um, every once in a while, God reminds me that he's really in charge. I, I, can, I can think that, that I'm like doing all my scheduling and, that, and I'm like so smart and I've got it all figured out. But, uh, but there's so many times where, you know, I'll, I'll do a series and, and I'll have it laid out like months before. And, and this is one of those. And, and, and I'll be teaching something, uh, like totally a, a different class, but it'll connect perfectly. And I'll be like, oh my goodness, this is God working. Well, like I couldn't figure this out. Like I, I couldn't dial this in. But look at what God did. And this series is one of those times. We planned this a long time ago. You know, I, I went and I looked and said, okay, what, what would look good for Lent? You know, what do we need? And I came across this series, and, and I love the title, Empty and Filled. And, 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 and then about a couple weeks in, this virus struck, right? It, it, it came, you know, from, from being something foreign to something that's right here in our neighborhoods, right here in our own county. Many, many cases, and, uh, and many, many people hurting. And, uh, and I thought, you know, do I have to change this? Do I have to totally shift? And, but then when I looked at, especially this week, I realized that, that God is bigger. And, and God's going to use whatever he has directed me. And, and, right, and all he asks me to do is just to be faithful, just to keep digging into the word of God and, and looking at it. And he's going to come up with some amazing stuff, sometimes despite me. Right? So, so if you've been tracking with the series, week one, we looked at our sin, right? The reality of that and how really dark that is, but how God just loves us, even though he knows even the, 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 the deeper darkness that's in us. Uh, and then last week, uh, the second week, we looked at holding on to Jesus and, and looking at, like, what are we holding on to? Uh, and, and even last week, we, we, we kind of, you know, looked at that and said, are we holding on to traditions? Are we, are we uh, bent on uh, just the way it's always been? Or are we going to hold on to Jesus, right? And then look at all those other things as helpful and as, uh, as great. Like, so things like this, like, like the church building. Like, I wish you could all be here, right? There's plenty of room for all of us. But it, but it is me, right? I'm here, and, and I see Frank's online, and, uh, and Jill's online, and we got Linda and, and Becca's here, right? But, but you're not here, Right, you're you're at home and you're and you're maybe, you know, got your family around you and that's really cool. And, and today, that, that that's what I think God is teaching us today through through this series. Like God wants us to empty uh, ourselves of our comforts, of our pride, of of how we think things should be, because He wants to fill us with His love, with His forgiveness. Right, He want, wants us to lean into that. And to not to, to hold on to all these other things as being what saves us or being even what identifies us and, or, or makes us who we are. We're God's people. We're, we're the people of God. And, and this week, these last couple weeks, and, and I think the weeks to come, are going to show us what really matters, especially when it comes to being church. Now, again, people are going back and forth. It's not the building or it is the building and, you know, and, and back and forth. And I wanted to say, look, it's the people of God. It's Jesus bringing his people together in any way, shape, and form, in any way that we can. Uh, are we going to rush to church buildings once this is over? Yeah, because we love it, right? Because the, the one thing we're going to be able to do then is what we can't do now, and that is just to gather together, right? I, I'm greeting people as they come on here uh, on, onto this because I haven't been able to greet you in person like I normally would on a Sunday morning. And, and churches throughout the, the world are facing the same issue, right? And we're, and we're going to continue to, to, to commit to loving the people around us, loving our world, and, uh, and we're going to do what we think is going to help in this situation. All right, so um, this week in this series really kind of got my attention. It was like, God, um, this is kind of perfect for what, we're, for what we're looking at because there's a tendency to, for me to want to keep things exactly the same, exactly the way they are, and, and I want to do things my way and, and the way that we do things. But guess what? Th maybe, maybe God wants us during this time, all of us, every church, every Christian, to be the church where they're at. 
like at home, like in your neighborhood, call, right? And, and maybe he's calling us. Call your folks. Call your friends, right? T- talk to them. Show, you, show that you care. That's, that's what God's calling us to do, to be church in a different way. Look at what Paul said. Um, and if you got a Bible, grab it, uh, 1 Corinthians 9. Uh, we're going to start over in, um, in verse 19. Now, I'm going to back the bus up for just a second. And uh, I, I want to look at, like, kind of like, what is Paul talking about? And, and first of all, he's talking about um, an answer to his critics. His critics are saying, look, you're, Paul, you're in it for the money and, uh, you know, and, and all these other objections. And, and they're saying that he wasn't legit. And, uh, and I guess, if, for me, like, if anybody's legit, it's Paul. I mean, this guy is amazing. And, uh, and his transformation, just so, just overwhelming and incredible. I mean, he goes from going and persecuting the church, trying to shut down the way, right, and trying to shut down what Jesus was doing, and um, to, to somebody who is just like, like does everything to let the, the, the message out. And he says, hey, I have, a, um, I have full rights to, to expect pay, to, to do all of that. And, and anybody who's, who's a worker for the gospel, who commits full time to just going out and, and bringing the word of God to people, like deserves to be paid. And he says, but here's what he does. And this is so cool. He says, but you know what? But I'm gonna put aside those rights. I'm not gonna say, hey, I demand this. I deserve this. I'm gonna get what's coming to me, right? And church, this is a call for us to say, you know what? We, we might have rights and we might have all these other things. But we're gonna put them aside in love because, because we know that, that all of this that we have around us, this beautiful church, right, all this equipment and all these things is, is no substitute for us just, just talking with people and, and sharing the love of Jesus. What a beautiful thing. And so, and so in verse 19, Paul says this. He goes, he says, for though I am free from all, in other words, I don't really have to answer. I answer to God and God alone. Like, like, he's my king, he's my lord, and, um, and, and, and even though there's critics, and even though there's people that want to, I'm not going to necessarily have to answer any of them. I am saved, I am free, God could take me to heaven, and I'm good. But he says, look, but I have made myself, he, he took a step, he was intentional. He said, I'm going to make myself a slave or a servant of all. That's going to be my life purpose that's going to be my trajectory why so that i might win more of them i'm a servant to all because i want to win some of them i want some of them to know jesus some of that 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 seem lost right and if you're watching this and 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 you're like wow i have no i'm i'm really kind of trying to figure this church thing out trying to figure this jesus thing out Right, we're doing this for you, right? Um, um, we're, we're doing this in such a way so that we could connect not just with our members here at Christ Royal. And that's the big message today. That this broadcast, this, this, this uh, whatever you want to call it, this Facebook Live, isn't just for people at, at, at this who, who, who are members here. But for the body of Christ throughout the world and, and for people, I think, who are really far from him. Man, maybe you're watching this and you're like, man, I just feel so far from him. And I have wandered Paul would say, hey, we're, we're, we want you to know that Christ loves you. Because what did Paul do? He said, to Jewish people, I became like a Jew. I became as a Jew. So I'm not going to offend them. I'm going to speak their language. I'm, I'm not going to get, you know, a bunch of bacon and, or a pork, you know, different kinds of pork and eat in front of them so that they're offended, you know, so I can show how free I am. And I, you know, I can, I can do this. Ha <laughs> ha, you can't. You're not going to do that. No way. He wants to win them. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, even though, it's, even though I'm not under the law. Again, somebody talking rit- rituals, somebody talking all of the legal requirements. He's like, I'm gonna, we're going to talk. I'm going to talk with him about that. I'm going to listen. I'm going to love them. I'm not going to go, that's just the most ridiculous thing ever. Even though he might be thinking it, even though he might be thinking, you know, that's not what it's about. It's freedom in Christ. He wants to get to that. And he realizes that if he just calls somebody, you know, some names and, and dismisses them, that they're, they're just going to walk away. And he could say, yeah, okay, I was right, but he ultimately loses. But he wants to win the ones under the law. And even those who are far from God, right, the ones outside the law, 
Even though he says that, that he is not outside the law of God, he's actually under the law of Christ. Notice, he, he, he has one thing that he's got to obey, and that's what, what Christ has called us to be, that we would trust in him, that we would trust in his love, that we would follow him every day, that we would go where he has us go, and we would say what he has us to say. He goes, that's the law. That's what he, like, focuses on. Why? Because I want to live, I want to win those outside the law. I want those who are far from God to come to him, to know who he is, to know that he loves them, to know that he came for them as well, all those lost sheep. And I want to, I want you to stop for a second. I mean, what do you think? Right, you, you can use your, you can use your keyboard, you can, you can type. I mean, I mean what is what, what do we need to change? Like, like who, who, who do we want to see know Jesus? That they might have the faith that we have. And what might we have to change to do that? Paul says, to the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I become all things to all people. That by, listen to this, this is so important that by all means, I might save some. Uh, one of my favorite guys to read, and, and I love watching him, uh, is Craig Rochelle. Um, and he's with Life Church TV. And um, I, I just love their focus as a church. I mean, they started in a garage. Okay, so they were doing stuff like this, like in a garage. But by the way, they're the ones that came up with like the version app. And they give that away. They don't get a cent from that. I mean, they're, it's just like, if you need it, you want it. They have video resource, they have all this stuff, and they just give it away. In fact, when I've looked on their, on their page, it says like, don't, you don't even have to uh, acknowledge us, which, and I think it's good to do that, but, but, but they even say like, like, claim it as your own, we don't care. Like, we're not even in it to, in it to get the, the pat on the back. We just want you to use it and, and, and it to help you do ministry better because that's the point. And isn't that the point of all of this? That we would share our resources, that we would, say, you know, like, like especially during this time, that, that churches that can do this, that we would say, hey, and, and, and I've really wanted to help, and, 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 you know, I don't know how well I did it this week, but I really want to help, like, like, like let's get this out. We, we want people to know who he is. I, I want the people of God to know him, right? The folks that know him, I want us, our faith to be deepened. I, I want our walk to be, to be more faithful, and, and I want our light to shine as brightly as it can. But there's some folks that are outside of this that, that, that need to know that we, we don't want them to be on the outside. We want them to be on in with us. In 23, Paul echoes, I think, what Life Church and, and Craig Rochelle would say. I do it all for the sake of the gospel that I might share with them in its blessings. In their mission statement, they say that we will do everything short of sin. This is Craig Rochelle and his, and his uh, church. We will do everything short of sin so that people who are lost might know about Jesus. And think about that. What if every church embraces, what if every, what if every one of us that's on here, that's, that's listening to this, would do everything, all that they do, putting aside our rights, putting aside our pride, putting aside our comfort level and what we want for the sake of the gospel so that we could share with them, with every different kind of group, every different kind of people, right, at, at different places in their walk, right? Some have been in the church for 50 years, and they know everything about everything, right? I could start to parade out different, uh, you know, different things that we use here at church, and there's people that would know every single name of what everything is in this place. The symbolism behind and all of that. But there's others who are like, boy, I just want to know if God loves me. And there's everybody in between. I mean, there's somebody watching, man, who, who, who goes, I, 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 he couldn't love me. Look at, look at what all I've done. But, but that's the beauty of this gospel. That's why it's, it's, it's called good news. It, it's what Jesus said in John three sixteen. 
that God so loved the world, right? The world is a, is a, is a word for like those who are outside of God, right? The, an unbelieving world. Like God so loved a world that was against him, that was his enemy, that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him. It doesn't say in whoever, right, becomes a perfect person and does what's right, then God decided to sign off on his salvation and his life. No, he goes, well, he goes uh, that he gave his son that whoever believes in him, believes that he died, believes that he rose for them, believes that when he went on that cross, he paid the price for their sins. And, and all God is calling us to do is look to him every day, every moment, and say, you're king, you're the Lord, you're the one who gave it all, I am free doesn't matter what we've done. Free. And, and here's, and here's the, the amazing thing, that we will not perish, but have eternal life. God didn't send his son, verse 17, into the world to condemn it, but in order that the world might be saved through him, that it might be saved, that we might be saved. This isn't just for us to grab and hold. I want you to think. I want you to, I want you to just pray for a minute. How, how, have, how have we held on to it? How have we said, oh, we love it, and, and it's good to love it. We should. We should love God with everything we have. We should love our neighbor. We should, we should do all of that. But, but it's, it's I, I think when, when the gospel hits us in our hearts, in our souls, right, when, when, it, when it comes to live there inside of us, the Holy Spirit showing us everything that, that God has done and, it, and we believe that it's for us. I believe that it's also, we, we, we also just long for people to know it that they may know it. Who do you know that needs to know it? That you could share with it. So, so maybe we need to wake up every morning. Maybe, maybe I need to wake up tomorrow. Maybe you need to wake up tomorrow and say, you know what, I, I'm going to do everything today so that I could share with all the people in my life, with all the people that I come in contact with, I want to share this love that God has given to me. It, isn't it better when you share something with somebody? I mean, I, I love watching movies. I love listening to music. But, you know, sometimes you, uh, you, you, you want to share it with somebody. And a lot of times I'll look for somebody in the house and be like, hey, you got to hear this. I know it drives my family crazy sometimes. But I'm like, man, you got to hear this. Or, boy, you got to see this. This is so cool. Can't keep it to myself. And this is a love that's too good, a, love, a, a, a message that's too great for us to keep to ourselves. So this is my, that's my challenge today. Who, who needs to know this? Pray for them. Pray for them. Love them. Listen more than anything else to them. Listen to them. Take that time. Because you know what? No one else in their life might be taking any time with them. You might be the only one that even cares. And what an awesome thing that would be if we could be those kinds of people. In Jesus' name, amen.